Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Games From Scratch, and uh, I've covered hundreds of game engines on this channel over time, and even more going back on GameFromScratch.com over the last decade, and of all of those game engines I have ever covered, there is one that I keep looking at and go, why the hell aren't more people using this? This is a game engine that has shipped more successful indie titles than um, the Godot game engine, for example. It has uh, a huge amount of pedigree. It has run on multiple platforms, and for the most part, it is entirely open source, but it's just not used that much. What we're talking about today is the game technology stack behind Shiro Games. Now, Shiro Games and then Motion Twin uh, before it, are really kind of involved in the hacks ecosystem. And this might be part of the reason why it isn't completely obvious that this is a game engine because it's a bunch of tools that are independent but work together and give you all of the features and functionality of a game engine and it might shock you at just how much power is here. So what we're looking at today is a blog post from Shiro Games where they're talking about uh, the engine that powered games such as Dead Cells, Evil Land, Northgard, Droxburg, and then we've got a couple of other titles such as uh, Papers, Please, were written using parts of this technology stack. And this whole post here kind of breaks down all of the pieces that go to Together to make these games. So here you can see one of their games in action. I believe this is uh, the upcoming or out now Darksburg here. It's a very successful tool chain. It's made games for multiple platforms. You've definitely heard of Dead Cells. It's a bestseller on a number of different platforms. Uh, Evil Land 1 and 2 also did a heck of a lot. And the reason why those are so entwined with Shiro Games is the person behind all of this, Nicholas Kanazi. I think I said that right. He is uh, the head of Shiro Games and the creator or the the curator, or I don't know what it'd be called now, but he's the driving force behind the Hacks programming language and a lot of the technology we're going to talk about today. So I did this blog post kind of discussing all of those technologies and how they work together. And I've covered a lot of these in kind of in isolation in the past. I did a tutorial series on uh, the Heaps engine. I think this is one that more people should check out. I like the Hacks language. I like the Heaps engine. And when I did a video, it, it just wasn't that popular, which kind of it made me sad because I think this is a great technology stack. So what we're looking at here today is how all of this stuff is used together to create a game. And we've got this nice graphic breakdown of how things are made. So at the very bottom here, you have the native layer. So first off, we have like things like SDL, DirectX, whatever. You need those things on any platform. In some cases, since, um, you know, Hacks is making use of, you know, the Switch's native library or the PS4's native library or the Xbox native library, this little piece can change. But that is the, the platform native code combined with this guy over here. So you've got, uh, you know, the low level stuff that is specific to each platform that is in the native layer as long with Hashlink. We'll get back to Hashlink in a second, but Hashlink can basically be thought of as a high performance virtual machine. It's optional and it can also spit out C code. So you don't have to run it on a VM on the device. So, um, uh, it's kind of the, where the stack comes in, and you got the programming language hacks. On top of that, we've got heaps. On top of heaps, we got DOMKit and Hide. Now, Hide can be a little confusing because there was an abandoned hacks IDE project. That's not what Hide is. So we're gonna look at what Hide is in just a second. Then we've also got Castle DB. I covered this in the past. HScript, MP Man, and HXBit. Of this entire chain, only one little piece isn't open source, and that's just because it re requires a lot of their proprietary information. So we're gonna do a quick run through of all of these various different pieces. They do a breakdown of how each of these things are used and how it works on the different platforms. So they got the hash v, uh, Hashlink VM. This is a virtual machine um, that is for performance-based runtime for games. So it's it's oriented towards real-time games. Uh, it allows you to come down and works on console ports uh, such as uh, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. It can be compiled directly to C. So you know you don't need to run in a VM when you're done. But the cool thing here is their 3D game Northgard required less than 500 megabytes of memory to run. So it's a very efficient VM. So you got the VM at the very bottom. You got your various different native libraries. As I mentioned, sometimes those native libraries are going to be uh, platform-specific as well. That kind of comes under the native tools section as well. Um, and then we've got uh, programming language layer. Of course, this is where hacks comes in. If you've never tried hacks, it's closest kind of, comp it's a lot like, huh, I guess, uh, action script, type script, uh, maybe a little bit of Swift mixed in, a little bit of Java. It's a very comfortable language. If you've used anything like C++, C Sharp, JavaScript, any of those languages, you'll get used to hacks in no problem at all. I've been a fan of hacks for quite a while now. And then of course, we've got heaps. Now, to be honest, if I'm going to do a takeaway from this video, heaps is a thing you want to check out at some point in time. This is ultimately the game engine that powers the game. It does things 2D rendering, 3D rendering, sound handling, control management, and so on. And then at the 
the hash link level, uh, so you've got the libraries come down here. So a hash link with DX11 could be targeted out from heaps. Uh, OpenGL SDL2, the uh, Nintendo Switch native libraries, the PS4, PS4 native libraries, or the Xbox One SDK, as well as WebGL2. So you can really make this thing target a number of different platforms. Um, and then we got a shader language built on top of it called HXSL. Uh, it's just kind of an abstraction between the, the various different shader languages that are out there. And then we get into Hide. Hide is a standalone application that allows you to view, um, create viewers and editors for 2D and 3D content. So in Hide, you've got things like Reverse Resource Tree Viewer, 2D Texture Viewer, 3D FBX Model Viewer, 2D and 3D Timeline Based Effects Editor, 2D and 3D Particle Editor, 3D Level Editor, Prefabs Editor, uh, Scripting Editor, and Shader Graph Nodal Editor. In a lot of ways, so here you can see a screenshot of Hide's running. This is your level editor. This is kind of the thing that brings all of your various different tools together, uh, works on a prefab concept. Uh, yeah, also its, its source code is available. On top of that, they've also built DomKit UI. DomKit is actually one of those things that you end up having to write eventually, and this is for doing user interface components. Basically, it allows you to use uh, CSS and HTML5 to do your UI layer. So you can see kind of they're using straight up uh, CSS and HTML5 style coding for doing the layout and so on. And then we've got Castle DB. I did a video on Castle DB in the past, and Castle DB is one of those things that even if you are not using hacks or heaps or anything else, you should be aware of because Hacks DB is a combination of two things. It is a database or a spreadsheet, depends on how you want to look at it, specifically designed for game development. And so many people are looking for that. And by the way, you can use it with other languages if you so wish, but it also comes with the tools. So let's say you've got the data in there, but you also want to be able to edit it, like create sprites from a sprite sheet of the data all being stored in a database. It's also got a, like a front end for handling that stuff. So here you can see Castle DB's front end. Uh, here's the data that you're being stored in it, but you can also see visualization. So if you're dealing with images, you can see the images. Uh, you can have, um, you know, hierarchies of data, a bunch of different categories. So it's basically a database and data editor designed specifically for games. And I know tons of people are looking for something like that and have no idea that Castle DB exists. And again, you don't need to use hacks with it, but the cool thing is if you do use hacks with it, um, it's got nice language definitions for getting the types and it kind of works nice with, um, you know, other tools and tool chain. So you see here, you've got macros for the things that you've defined in there. Uh, and it makes integration into other pieces nice and easy. Now we've got HScript. HScript is a, a scripting language. It's a small parser based on the hacks language. So it allows you to basically script your game using hacks if you so wish. So you can have your designers writing small bits of hacks code and not part of the actual game itself. And then we got HXBit. This is a serialization and networking synchronization library. And then finally you have MP man. This is MP uh, multiplayer management stuff. This is the part, this is the only piece in the entire technology stack we talked about right now that is closed source because this has got things like DLC management, uh, player authentication, lobby management. So they, they don't want to get hacked and they don't want to have all that kind of stuff. This is the piece that they kind of had to hide. Now, the cool thing is it's built on top of HXBit, which is network synchronization and serialization. So if you need to add networking to your game, you just need to roll this kind of stuff yourself. And I think there's actually some hacks libraries to make that kind of stuff easy for you. So those are all the component pieces what we are talking about today. So obviously it starts at the very beginning, hacks. Hacks is a programming language. If you, I don't know, I honestly just say, check it out. Here's some code. And you kind of look at that and go, oh, okay, that could be, and we're kind of getting there right now, right? Like languages are kind of merging into a single gest stop. We've got like this, this Uber language that we're slowly moving towards, at least in the world of, you know, the, the C, C derived style languages. There's a lot of commonality that we've worked toward. You're going to be immediately comfortable with hacks if you have uh, experience with a similar language. It's updated quite consistently. And one of those things about hacks is hacks is often a meta language in that it is a language designed to be compiled into other languages. So you can take hacks and compile it into C sharp code or C++ code or C code or HTML and so on. So it's a very versatile language because of the tool chain around it. But the language itself, it's, it's a very simple to pick up and understand language. So uh, the hacks at the top kind of might be part of why this stack isn't as popular as it is because, you know, um, C sharp has a lot more oomph behind it than like hacks does. But I don't, I don't suggest you let that turn you off. It's, it's a nice environment to work with. And you've got nice integration into tools like uh, IntelliJ or uh, 
Visual Studio Code or so on. So you can work in your editing chain of choice or your, your editing tool of choice with hacks. Language, I do recommend you check out all the stuff that you expect to see from a language. It's there. Now on top of that, then we've got hash link. Now as mentioned earlier on, this is the virtual machine and it's optional, right? You can, you can compile down to native code or you can compile to various different other platforms. That's one of the strengths of hacks. But you can also compile to hash link, which comes with its own debugger that has integration into tools such as Visual Studio Code. So hash links is really orientated towards high performance code. You can also integrate in C code to it. It should be pretty straightforward. It's got a number of libraries already built in that it works with. But the key thing here is again, the performance. So low memory usage, this is a, where a lot of VMs go wrong when it comes to games. This is a language and this is a runtime that were both created and birthed and developed to make games. So, okay, so that's the next piece we have in there is the hash link. And then we go into heaps. Now heaps again is the star of this show. If there's anything you can take away from this, if you want to try out hacks game programming, try it out on the heaps engine. I did a hands-on with it. Again, heaps has been used to make a number of really popular games. As you can see here, this is, um, uh, Dead Cells running here, uh, Evil Land, and so on, all here, Northgard. Uh, it's a great engine. It's really easy to use. It kind of reminds me in some ways of working with like, XNA or LibGDX. It's like one of those comfortable frameworks to work with, uh, split into these different categories. So you got H2D for 2D work, H3D for 3D work. You can mix and match between those two, by the way, so you can have pseudo 3D in a 2D world, or technically 2D in a pseudo 3D world. Uh, HXD contains the cross-platform classes and resource loading stuff, and again, there's like this nice macro system, so you can kind of access real, so you can grab textures and sound files and so on, but have uh, IntelliSense and logic code like when you're typing it so there's a nice link there between your data and your code due to this hxd layer and then finally you have their intermediate shader layer they hack shader language implementation of hxl sorry hxsl so heaps is again the star i did a hands-on i did a little bit of a tutorial for getting started with it i'll show that at the very end but if there is a takeaway from this video it is if you've never tried it go check out heaps it's pretty awesome and then we got hide hide is uh, that tool we saw the screenshot of it in action this is essentially your level editor you can preview 3d models edit material properties create timeline based visual effects create whole 3d levels including placing lights making tra painting trains so on create and edit 2d and 3d particle systems you can access and modify castle databases we'll get back to that in a second I extend uh, with game specific prefabs and extend with your own specific editor so hide is kind of the game engine of course oh, sorry editor and it is all completely open source now the weird thing is they don't have any screenshots on this page if you're the creator i would recommend pimping your your engine a little bit more because that's one of those things people miss is that this whole technology stack well um heaps may not have a game engine hide is that game engine and they work together to provide the you know the kind of functionality that you expect in like a turnkey game engine and i, I think that's one of those things i would say as a takeaway it would be cool if they actually made a download that had heaps castle um uh, and uh hide and so on all kind of as a single download and you just called it the uh, I don't know, Shiro game engine. That would that would actually be a good move for adoption wise, especially for people more on the, the entry level of the technology scale. All right, so then we've got heaps. This is again, the DOM kit. This is the way that you can actually um, mark up and handle um, your game layer using CSS and HTML. This is very invaluable. It's something that almost every game engine needs to create some kind of um, UI layer on top. And especially if you've got you know advanced formatting or if you wanna start storing uh, UI information in a database and displaying it in the game at runtime and about making tools that your people can work with. Well, CSS and HTML are pretty commonly supported and the integration between um, the game engine and the uh, HTML that's brought in is pretty simple and pretty easy. So this gives you a nice, easy UI layer and a kind of an invaluable tool. And then we get into Castle DB. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, Castle DB and Castle DB can be used outside of um, the whole ecosystem, by the way. So you can use Castle DB as a structured static database with an, uh, an editing environment built in. I highly recommend doing so. Everything is stored in XML or JSON and can be modified with Castle DB. Uh, you can also, there's a map editor integrated in, so you can see right there. So you can actually create 2D tile maps directly inside of Castle DB. But 
in a nutshell, CastleDB is a game-based database. And it's one of those things, again, a lot of people are looking for something like this. It, it gives you the editing tools you need to actually edit your data as well. But just for a performant, game-focused, lightweight database, uh, that's exactly what CastleDB provides. And I do highly recommend checking it out. It's, it's very, very cool. And I've also done a video on it as well. And then we've got HScript. HScript's pretty straightforward. It basically parses and evaluate hacks expressions. This gives you the ability to code in, in, um, you can interpret your code dynamically without recompiling. So basically you can have a layer of code inside of your game that you can give over to your level designers or scripters or whatever without having them screw with the core of the game itself, but give them a heck of a lot of functionality for how they implement things. And you'll all be using the same language across the board. And Hacks is high enough level enough that it is a decent scripting language. It's not outrageously difficult to learn. You know, something like Lua would ultimately be easier, but uh, this is you know, you're going to get a lot of functionality at your scripting level. So if you want to start doing your game's logic outside of your game engine itself, you can use something like HScript to give you that abstraction layer there. And then HXBit, finally, this is just straightforward networking library. So for serializing things, um, sending that data across and then deserializing it on the other end. That's what HXBit is all about. And that's about it. That is the entire Shiro game technology stack. And again, I find it criminally underrelated, under... <laughs> criminally uh, underrepresented in the game industry because this guy has been made, battle-tested, made games cross-platform that have sold really, really well, and it's not being used more. And it, it, it boggles my mind, to be honest. So this is definitely one of those engines I would highly recommend checking out. I like the hacks language. There's decent learning resources for picking it up out there. Heaps is a great little engine. CastleDB is almost a unicorn, a game-focused database. Lots of things here I really strongly recommend people check out. And then if you want to, I've actually done a couple of tutorials here. This first one is straightforward. It is on getting up and running. Now, this was a long time ago. So this was 2016 that I did this. So hopefully it still mostly works, but it shows you how to set up. Uh, you know, they had their own IDE. I'm not sure if they're still making that anymore, if they switched to Visual Studio. But it shows you the basics of getting a Hello World up and running. And then I move on to um, graphics programming and all that stuff. I don't know if I ever did a nice, uh, straightforward uh, table of contents for this series or whatever. But if you search on my YouTube channel there are a number of tutorials for hacks and heaps i think i did three or four of them at least i got into input audio graphics and a couple other topics so if you want to check it out definitely i've got some content for you there and then finally castle db i did a hands-on with this guy too so if you're interested in having that gate database side of things uh this kind of walks you through creating um you know entries in your database. So here I am creating monsters with hit point values, active sprites attached to them. And then I can show you how you can actually use that database. So here we go. So this is as simple as it gets. I created the database and I'm going ahead and I loaded it. So I loaded my new CDB, loaded in by name. And then here you can see I actually asked the monster that I created, my data, my DB .git lich, and I can check the lich's hit point. So you see here I've got, you know, lich, and then I could check the hit points. So the integration between the code and the database are flawless. It's, and this is one of those areas where it's not particularly common. These just raw database editors. Godot has something, Unreal has something, Unity has something, but it's also missing quite often. And of course, there's also a simple 2D map editor built directly into Castle. So you can create uh, multi-layered uh, grid-based 2D maps in Castle DB, um, and yeah, you're off to the races. So if you want to check it out, I did a video on that. As you can see by this this graphic, it was a while ago. Uh, but uh, again, CastleDB, just another cog in this whole machine, this great technology stack across the board. So if you're interested in it, do definitely read this initial post. It will go through a lot of what I just covered, how those pieces all slot together. I've got a lot more links to show you basically for, you know, if you want to dig deeper into this topic, uh, I've done a number of videos. I'll make sure they are all linked in the linked article down below. But if there's a takeaway from this, definitely at the very least, check out Heaps, check out Castle DB. But the cool thing is all of these pieces like Hide and um, HX Bit and so on, they all kind of work together and provide you a, a really solid game engine that again, is just not as well known as I think it deserves to be. So anyways, that is it. That is the Shiro's game technology stack in a nutshell. Let me know what you think of hacks and heaps and all that stuff in general. Let me know if this is something you would be interested in a tutorial series on. Maybe it's gotten better and, and you know that initial lack of interest has gone away and more people are interested in this now. Maybe I'd look at it more as like an entire technology stack as opposed to like individual pieces. So let me know if you have that interest and I will take it to advisement. And uh, yeah, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.